Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here to talk about some interesting things I've learned about my reading taste over the last year or so. I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about some specific things I've noticed. Um, some of these are kind of surprising for me, because a lot of these are changes from what I used to think I really enjoyed in books, and I just, I don't know, I just think it's cool to talk about how our reading tastes change or get more specific or expand or whatever. I just find this kind of thing really interesting, so hopefully you guys do too. I've also done a couple of videos on book tropes that I like or don't like in the past, so if you're interested in more about that I will link those down below as well. And these are in no particular order, these are just things that I have thought of that over the last year approximately um, I've either come to a different conclusion about or expanded my tastes in or sometimes gotten even more picky <laughs> with my tastes in, so let's talk about them. The first thing was a huge surprise to me and that is Robin Hood retellings. Now I don't really know why I never really sought out a lot of Robin Hood retellings before because I did really enjoy the original story, or I say original story, um, I like the Fox Disney movie and the Errol Flynn movie. <laughs> uh, but the overall story of Robin Hood has always been something that I enjoyed and that I was interested in, but I for whatever reason it wasn't something that I thought to seek out. And then earlier this year I read No Good Deed by Cara Connolly, which was a sort of Robin Hood retelling or inspired story, and I was just shocked by how much I enjoyed that book, not because I thought it was going to be bad, I had heard basically nobody talk about this, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then immediately after that um, I read Sherwood by Megan Spooner, which I absolutely adored and is one of my favorite books of the year. <laughs> so I was kind of reading those two books back to back that made me realize like, oh, I really like Robin Hood retellings. Like, I think they're, I think I'm kind of in that sweet spot for them where I really enjoy elements of the original story, but I don't have so much personal attachment to it that I'm really particular about the way it is retold. Because I definitely, like, as somebody who loves retellings, I definitely have certain kinds of retellings or stories that I'm like extra picky about because I love the original so much or I have like such strong feelings about the original. So I think that's one of the reasons I'm enjoying them so much, but there's like a couple others that I'm really excited to get to. Uh, so yeah, I'm just really enjoying Robin Hood retellings lately. And then another thing is about hate to love romances. So I love hate to love. I think a lot of people are probably aware of that. Um, but I didn't realize until kind of recently that when I, like I was equating hate to love with slow burn because really what I love is slow burn hate to love. Like if it's a hate to love romance but it happens really quick, I don't enjoy that at all. So that's just something that's been kind of interesting for me to realize is like, oh this thing that I thought was a favorite trope of mine, like it is a favorite trope, but it's o it's really only a favorite in combination with another trope I love, which is the slow burn or slow developing romance. Um, and specifically I found that I'm very picky about contemporary hate to love. Uh, I talked about this in a wrap-up I think that I will link below. Um, but I tend to have a couple of problems with contemporary hate to love because it's either, it either doesn't feel like real hate to love, like these two people declare each other mortal enemies for a really superficial reason, or it's kind of the opposite where it's like, like they're just, like these people are just being hateful to each other, especially when it's the guy treating the girl like that. I some, I always read those and it's like, I would not want to spend time with this person, like he's treating you like generally you're stupid or like you're a waste of his time or he's just being like super condescending, like those are all negative so it makes sense that they're in a hate to love context, but when it's in a real world setting I have a hard time reading stuff like that and being okay with it being a romance. Another retelling uh, interest that has really shocked me this year is Jaff or Jane Austen fanfiction. Um, and I think, again, I'm still very new to this genre, but I think the difference between this and retellings is that Jaff is usually set in the time period of Jane Austen's novels and using the original characters. So it's not like I read like A Shed Last by Uzma Jalaluddin, which I really enjoyed, but that is a modern day Own Voices Muslim uh, Pride and Prejudice retelling that is in a contemporary setting and it's just kind of inspired by the story, like the characters aren't the same. Um, and with Jaff it's like I had read one or two that I really didn't like and like I love Jane Austen, I reread Jane Austen a lot, so I am very specific and particular about the way I like that setting done or like those characters done. Like I love the original so much that I was a pretty hard sell <laughs> on other authors kind of taking that on. And then I read a couple that I really really enjoyed and I think the first one actually that showed me that I could actually enjoy Jaff was Unequal Affections by Laura S. Ormiston. Ormiston? I think Ormiston. Um, I really loved that book. I think one of the things that really opened my eyes to the possibility of enjoying Jane Austen fanfiction is that the setting and the writing felt very period appropriate without feeling like the author was like artificially forcing this style in an attempt to copy Jane Austen. And then since reading that one I have really enjoyed a book by Elizabeth Adams. Um, I bought a couple others of hers that I'm really looking forward to, and recently I also read The Clergyman's Wife by Molly Greeley. So I'm just really excited that I have been enjoying um, like Jane Austen kind of adjacent stories like that because that's something that I never thought I would like. Like I was pretty, pretty stubborn about um, not really enjoying that 
that subgenre because again I have such strong feelings for the original but there are some authors who are so good at it and I'm just really happy that I have realized that. Another trope that I have realized I really like um, sometimes is time travel and specifically I like time travel stories where the time travel is not the point. <laughs> so I feel like I need to explain this one a little bit. Um, I don't like time travel stuff in general. Um, it's actually one of my least favorite kind of sci-fi or speculative is it even a trope or like a story element or whatever? I don't like time travel plots. But the things that I do really, really like is when there's a main character who gets transported back in time and then they're like adjusting to the world and meeting new people. And I think the reason that I like it so much is because it makes the personal stakes of the story so high because as they're getting to know people in that past time period, I think all the ones I've liked have been in the past, um, as they're starting to get to know other people there and bond with them and make friendships or like sometimes romantic relationships, as all of that is happening, you as the reader are enjoying it. But there's also that like built in, um, I guess, drama or conflict because you as the reader know that this character want, like doesn't belong here, like wants to go back home to the other people that they love, like their family or their friends or whoever. And so I just think that like that built in conflict is something that really appeals to me because it's so based in character and again I'm a very character focused reader. Like angst in character relationships and romances and friendships and stuff is something I have a very particular kind I like and this is one of the kinds that I do like. Like a couple examples of this are No Good Deed which I mentioned earlier and also Tom's Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce which is a classic middle grade um, fantasy I guess you could call it but again there's like a little bit of a time travel aspect and I just loved the, I just love the way that this affects characters. I just love the way that this forces uh, authors to explore characters and their relationships and like sacrifice and like, I don't know, like what, what being happy means. Um, I just think there's a lot of potential in time travel stories like that. Although again, I like it when the time travel stuff is not really the point. Like if you really love the sci-fi exploration of time travel, you might not like these books as much as I did, but I loved them. Next I have another kind of science fiction one, um, and just overall I have realized over the last year or so that I am even more picky about sci-fi than I thought I was. <laughs> um, it's been really a bad year for science fiction for me actually, like I've had a lot of low reviews for sci-fi books, including some really beloved ones. Um, but one thing I have noticed, and I think one of the reasons I'm having a hard time with sci-fi, is I've realized that I don't like science fiction where the majority of the story is about how cool space is, which sounds kind of silly because like, you know, it's sci-fi, a lot of it takes place in space, um, but I hate space. So whenever I'm reading a book, the majority of the reader's enjoyment is supposed to come from how exciting and beautiful and wonderful space is, I kind of check out. Um, I think that's one of the reasons I really didn't like Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which I know a lot of people loved. Um, I mean, I had some issues with character stuff and everything too, but another thing I didn't like about it is that like most of the world building was sort of based on the assumption that you are really passionate about space and that you would love to be in space. And again, as somebody who does not like space, this didn't do a lot for me. Um, so the kind of sci-fi I like is when it's really sort of like the um, time travel thing where it's not about the time travel. I like sci-fi where it's not about space. So like The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, I know a lot of serious sci-fi fans look down on it. I love that series because it was about the retelling aspects and the characters and they were in space but it wasn't about that. And that setting was important, like I love the fact that the Rapunzel character was on, stuck on a satellite instead of, you know, being in a tower. So it didn't matter, it's not like Marissa Meyer just ignored the fact that it was set in space. But you didn't have to love space to enjoy the books, and I think that's one of the things I really liked about it. Um, the same thing with Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray, which I reread this year and really loved. Um, I love the two main characters of that book so much and that's another one where like technology is really important and especially how like if if like technology can be a person, you know, I love explorations like that. So that stuff I really enjoyed and it wasn't so much about um, like the setting of being in space. And then finally the last one I'm going to talk about today is that I am getting extremely picky about villains and antagonists. And by that I mean that I don't really get excited about them anymore. Um, like there are certain kinds of morally gray characters and explorations of morality that I do enjoy, but I think I'm getting to a point where I am so burned out with all the terrible things happening in the world that I kind of like reading about good guys. And I'm starting to think that it's even more difficult to write a well-developed hero or good guy character than it is to write an interesting villain because honestly sometimes it feels like you just give a villain a tragic backstory and make them like marginally attractive and 
people love them, which I have fallen for too. I am fully including myself in this because I have done that. I admire people who try to do the right thing and who struggle to do the right thing. Like I'm not, I don't want like a chosen one type thing. I want ordinary people who decide they have to fight back. Like they want to do what is good and what is right. And sometimes they make the wrong choice and they don't know what they should be doing. And like they mess up. Like I like characters with flaws, but I don't like rooting for people who are evil. So anyway, um, those are some things I have learned about my reading taste recently. And I don't know that all of these are from the last year, but I think the majority of them are, or they've been like really solidified this last year. And I just think it's really cool how our reading taste can change like this. Um, like it makes me excited that I, like look at all these things that I didn't know I love. And now I can go forward and find more of the things I love. Like that just makes me really excited. Um, please let me know how you guys feel about any of the tropes or story elements that I talked about. And let me know one thing that you learned about your reading taste this year that kind of surprised you. I would just be really interested to hear that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!